Hello Java Hipsters! My name is Matt Rabel and today I'll show you how to use Micronaut for JHipster to create a new Angular app with a Micronaut backend and then we'll deploy it to Heroku and we'll integrate it with Okta. Let's get started. So Micronaut, if you go to micronaut.io, you can learn a bit more about the project itself. It's a modern JVM-based full-stack framework for building modular, easily testable microservice and serverless applications. So it's polyglot framework, supports many different languages. Currently, the implementation in JHipster only is in Java. They really try to make things really fast and uh, low memory consumption. There is the generator JHipster Micronaut. That's the blueprint for JHipster. And how blueprints work in JHipster is you can create a blueprint to overwrite what is the Fault. So in this case, it's overriding Spring Boot and it's using Micronaut instead. And then I have this Okta JHipster Micronaut example repo where I created everything. You can find the final source code and all that. And in here, I have a demo.adoc, which is an abbreviated list of steps to perform this screencast. So I'm going to look at it in ASCII doc to make it look a little nicer. We're using Micronaut 2.0 in this example, and we'll be able to add Okta to Heroku in just one command and deploy to Heroku. So that's pretty slick. Let's go ahead and put that on the left, then we'll open a terminal on the right here. And you'll need Java 11. I have it, and Node 12 or greater. I'm on Node 14. And Docker installed and running. Yep. And you'll need a Heroku account, which I've already set up. If you don't have one, you'll want to go to heroku.com, go to sign up for free, and create one there. So in this screencast, we'll build a Micronaut app with JHipster. We'll start with a JHipster domain language file, which defines what the whole model looks like behind the scenes and how things are related to each other. We'll deploy to Heroku, and then we'll build a Docker container, and I'll show you how to deploy that to Heroku as well. So we're going to build a simple app that allows you to record space launches and add images to the event. It'll look similar to NASA's launches and landings. I don't know if you've seen this. It's just basically a listing. Now, I'm not going to do all the work with the CSS to make it look this nice, but I will have all the data model in place that you can make something look like this. So we'll install JHipster in the Micronaut Blueprint using NPM. So I recommend these versions 6.10.1 and 3.8 for generator JHipster Micronaut because I've tested them and I know they work together. So you can certainly try greater versions, and they should work, but I can't guarantee it, right? Here, you'll be able to watch me use these versions, and everything will work just fine. So we'll create a directory called spacevan, and then we'll put an app.jdl in there. And I'm going to use this one here. You can see here's an application. This is how a basic application is defined. And JHipster has a number of defaults. So all these are doing is overriding the defaults. Um, application type is monolith by default. So I just explicitly specified that I didn't have to. The authentication type is JWT by default. So that's why I'm specifying OAuth2. Package name is a little different. And I want to use uh, Postgres for production, not MySQL. And I want to add in Protractor there. And then we have a few events, a space event with a name, date, and description, and a photo. And then and the mission as a name and description, the event type, launch or landing, and then the relationship, right? There's a one-to-one -one between space event and mission, and there's some pagination rules, infinite scroll, and just regular pagination. So we can grab this whole thing and put it into this file, and then save it. And then instead of running jhipster, what you'll run is mhipster. So mhipster import jdl, app.jdl. So you see that took about three minutes to run. This will vary depending on your hardware and your internet speed. And if you're recording your screen like I am, sometimes it takes me you know, 40 seconds to create one. Sometimes you see times like this. So it just kind of depends on your environment. By default, when you choose OAuth 2 for JHipster, it uses Keycloak. And we like that because it runs in a Docker container and we can automatically populate it with the JHipster clients, register their login redirect URIs, put in users, passwords, all that kind of stuff. So. You can start that with docker compose source main docker key cloak up dash d to run it as daemon. But I also have a shortcut using oh my csh so I can do jh key cloak up and it runs that same command. So once that's up, you can run mvnw to start the app. Once it's finished starting, you can open up localhost 8080 and click sign in. You'll see we got a cool new logo for a micronaut there. And you can use admin admin. And you're in. Um, this is actually a warning from Chrome that uh, they detect if uh, the username and password has been in a breach. 
and so admin admin uh, people have probably used that before so we can go to entities right and see the space mission now there's a bunch of data in here already and the reason that that exists is from faker.js project that we use to create fake data only in development and we found that developers like this because they don't have to go in and add new records just to see if stuff works right they can edit existing ones change something from progressive to progressive 2 right and then it updates it or they could delete ones and uh, they could also create a new one right new event pick a picture because pictures are required um, do Argentina there and that admission is Vermont Center and now it's been created right down here at the bottom so that's all working you can also go to the administration and see various metrics for the timings on uh, the different requests it's making uh, there's also help in here for the disk space and database uh, configuration if you want to see all the different properties that are set or being used um, some auditing as well as logging and so if you were to look at like micro not right you could change its logging from warn to uh, info and then if you want to switch the language you could do that as well and you'll see it's all in French now so back to English and back to my instructions here the next thing I want to do is show you how to turn off faker under source main resources application dev .yml. search for faker and you'll see that there's liquid base and it's got two different contexts right dev and faker enabled we can uh, turn that off and now we won't have fake data when we restart it we can also run npm run e2e since we chose protractor for testing it'll actually test our full ui and make sure all those generated entity screens and all that works You can see that took about 50 seconds to run. Uh, when I've done it before, it took about 35. And you can see that some of these have longer timings. A lot of that's because the library that we use in Angular to do alerts, there's something in Protractor where it actually has to wait for those. There is an open issue about it. We are trying to fix it. It shouldn't basically sit there and wait for those to go away. So now we can deploy Micronaut to Heroku. So we'll shut this down here. Exit over there and clear here. And all you have to do is type, well, Heroku login. So you have to be logged in Heroku first. You know, pop a browser and log you in. Okay, so I'm logged in, so I can go to heroku.com now. And I could also do Heroku apps and see what apps I have right here. And so Micronaut Space, that's one that I want to deploy to, so I'm going to go ahead and delete it. And then we'll do M Hipster Heroku. And it'll prompt us for a few things. First of all, it'll prompt us for the name. So that's the micro not space. This has to be unique. If you put in a non-unique one, it'll prompt you for a different one. Um, we'll do it in the US. We'll compile it on Heroku. We'll use Java 11. This question is, says, you are using OAuth 2. Do you want to use Okta as your identity provider? So we're going to say yes. Uh, notice that it requires that curl and JQ are already installed. So I do have those installed. So I will use just uh, mrabel at gmail.com and then a password and it'll prompt you to change this after you've done this process but you need to create an admin user to act on behalf for you with jhipster and then it'll go ahead and you know do heroku's magic to first of all upload it when it prompts you to overwrite palm.xml do that so it'll do a git push and then on heroku it'll actually do the whole build process so normally if you have a fast laptop doing it locally and uploading the jar might be faster but if you don't have a fast laptop or a slow internet it might be better to just do git push and then let heroku do it for you so you can see that it took about 10 minutes to run your time will vary uh, i've done it in five minutes before so it really depends on internet speed and if you're recording your screen you can run heroku open to open it up in your favorite browser you see, looky there, it's all working. So now we can click sign in. Now will redirect us to Okta, and this is our new developer account it created for us. We were mrabel at gmail.com. And then it'll prompt you for your old password, and you can change it to a new one. And then it'll prompt you for a password reset question. And this is just so if you lose your password, um, you can actually recover it and be able to log in again. And then it redirects you back to your app and you're logged in, right? You can see the entities. There aren't any because you know, we haven't created any, but we could go ahead and create a mission soon. 
and you can see it's talking to Postgres and that's all working. So pretty cool that you know you can deploy to Heroku and configure it with Okta in only one command. Well, there's another thing you can do and that is build a Docker image of your app and deploy that to Heroku. So next we're gonna use Jib to build a Docker image of our app. And Jib is basically a tool from Google that allows you to build an image without having a Docker file. It uses settings in your Maven or Gradle build and basically calculates a lot of the ways that it should be building. So we can just run mvnw prod, specify the production profile, verify, and Jib Docker build. So by default, jhipster creates a number of Docker containers for you. If you were to look in source main Docker, there's one for Keycloak, there's monitoring, there's Postgres, right? These are all the containers you can run in production, as well as AppYML. You'll see that it's got the Space app, right? That's the image that we just built. It's got the Java options, the Micronaut environments, the JDBC URL to talk to another Docker container, the OAuth definition to talk to Keycloak, and Docker containers usually talk to each other using names within the same network. But what happens with Keycloak is it's gonna redirect you in the browser, and it's gonna have this you know, in the URL. So uh, we do have to make sure that key cloaks define an Etsy host. So you see there, I have a key cloak pointing to 127.001. So you do need to make that change to run everything with Docker Compose locally. So we can uh, we can run these two commands to turn off key cloak or shut it down and then restart everything. So now we should be able to log in and prove that our Docker image is good to go and will work. They were already logged in as the user. And if we were to go to entities, we can see there's some in there, and it looks like it still has that faker data, but uh, shouldn't be a problem in production. So let's go ahead and create a new app on Heroku for this Docker container. So just Control C to shut all that down. So it'll create a new app for us, and then we can add that as a remote. Get remote, add, call it Docker, and then we'll go ahead and remove this one, and we can log into Heroku's container registry using Heroku container colon login and then we can do docker tag. The name of our engine is space, or the name of our image is space. If you wanted to change that, you could go into uh, palm.xml and change that, and registry.heroku.com, and then the name of our app, which is this Rocky Craig here, and web, and then docker push, Rocky Craig web. And so you can see that's pushed to Heroku now. And the Postgres and Okta add-ons that we used before when we did mHipster Heroku, we can reuse those. And we want to because especially for Postgres, that one's already got the tables and the schema created for you using Liquibase. That was part of the deployment process versus a Docker container, right? You're just deploying an image. You don't have any ancillary processes that run as part of that. We'll do Heroku add-ons and we'll look at the one that was originally created, right? So this has that Okta and that Postgres add-ons in there and we can attach these to our current application. So you can do Heroku add-ons attach, and then the Postgres name, which is this guy right here, and remote is Docker, right? So we're moving it from Heroku to Docker, or we'll actually be using it on both. So we have a couple Git remotes, right? Git remote, we have Heroku and Docker. So now we can do another attach, but this time it'll be for Okta. Okay, and you'll see it actually copied all the configuration variables over there. So if we did Heroku config uh, remote Docker, you can see we have a, a number of settings now. And if we compare that with Heroku, they're pretty similar. The difference is with uh, Heroku, we do some stuff to actually set the environment variables and to know how to talk to that Postgres database. With the actual Docker container, we need to set uh, some JDBC database URL and username and password environment variables so it knows Micronaut knows how to talk to that Postgres instance. First of all, I'm just going to grab the database URL and then I'll put that into a text editor here and bump that up a little. And then we'll grab this code here. So these are environment variables that are defined in uh, Heroku's profile. This J JDBC database URL, username and password, you might notice those aren't standard Micronaut property names for data sources. The database URL is everything past the at sign there. All right, and then the username is everything before the colon. And the password is this right here. And so that command returns right in this syntax, Postgres username password address. That's how I was able to figure that out. So now we can set those commands or set those environment variables. And now we can specify Micronauts environments to use. 
So it's using prod and Heroku for the environments, and then uh, the Java Ops, it only needs 128 megs. And there's actually another one I forgot, but that's in the, I can look in the proc file that it creates, and that's this Micronaut M deduction. This basically allows you to specify the environments without Micronaut trying to do it on its own. And then we can release the container and start the app, but we forgot the uh, remote docker there. So Heroku container release web and specify the remote because we have multiple in our project. And now we can do Heroku logs tail remote docker. And there it is up and running. So we can, uh, we don't want to click on that URL because it's local host, but if we were to open up another window and do Heroku open, then this is our Docker container, All right? Rocky Craig, can we sign in? Nope. And this is a common issue that people see with Okta. There's basically a redirect URI that doesn't match what's in our app settings. So if you look up here, here's the redirect URI it's trying to get to, right? And so Rocky Craig isn't in there. So I like to just grab this URL and then Roku is still going here. We can log in as an admin using this Okta thing right here. Then we can go to the web application is the one you want to modify. So right in here, web, go to general and then add these new login redirects. So, all right, we got that. And then we need this part on the end. And then we just need this down here, slash logout. So now with our Rocky Craig, try again. And this is there, right? Cause we're logged in as an administrator. Go new incognito, sign in. And a secret of Okta is you don't actually need the at sign or anything beyond that for the password. You can just use the username. Now we're logged in, right? And we're an administrator, so we can see everything. Our Docker container is working, and you'll notice there's no data, right? There's no faker data being put in there, except uh, what I entered previously because it's using the same database. You can also go to securityheaders.com, try out that URL. And look at that, gets an A, right? So there's all kinds of good security headers that keep our app secure. That's about it. Again, the code is on GitHub at Okta J Hipster Micronaut example. I hope you've enjoyed learning about Micronaut and J Hipster. It's a nice integration. I've done a lot of work to uh, figure out the kinks and solve them so you could have this nice working screencast. If you like this screencast, you should follow my team on Twitter. We're at OctaDev. There's also myself at MRabel on Twitter. And we have a YouTube channel that you're probably watching this on right now. So please subscribe and hopefully you'll love our content that we post a couple times a week. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.